What is going on, everybody? We are talking Matlock Season 5. Jason, I'm joined by John. John, now if you could please handle getting us two clean glasses of coffee, I would greatly appreciate it. Because the last one had a thumbprint on the side of it that I was not okay with. Neither were my associates. So if you could just make get that done. And then while you're at it, you can go ahead and scratch your back against the wall as somebody tries to flirt with you that you don't notice, everybody. This episode of Matlock, can't wait to talk about it. It's super, super exciting. It's called The Mother. It's the first episode of season five. I just got done watching Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I'm a little bit on a high. So, uh, John, how are you? I'm doing well, but first of all, you're on a natural high, correct? I am on, uh, yeah, uh, of course, absolutely. <laughs> that's that's the, only, that's the only one to be on, guys. It's the only it drug is, you it, need. You just need great Ghostbuster action. That's the only drug you need, man. It has been a long week in my personal life, but I'm just glad that I can take an hour to be with you. And I, we went to Indiana yesterday, man, and that was a fun panel. And we had a line. People waiting for us to get into the panel. Yeah. Oh, I'm right. not going to how many people were in the line, but we had a line, and it was fantastic. <laughs> You know what? what That's happened? awesome, dude. That's awesome. I was gonna. You took the very first note I have down here, and I can cross it off. I, I it says ask about Indiana. So Indiana was good then. It was, man. It was really good. It was a lot of fun. I need we. I think we all needed that little getaway. Um, but it was it was fun. I got to spend some time with the girlfriend. We went out the night before. We stayed in a hotel. You'd have been proud of me, John. Eighty dollars for a three and a half star hotel. Dude, all the other hotels there were like four or five hundred dollars. So when all the way up to the point when we got to our room, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. There was no other shoe. It was fantastic. Experience. Okay. Great, great time. I'm what glad was that. what was the hotel? Um, it was uh not crown royal, um something <laughs> crown. Something crown. Crown point? Crown Plaza. Crown Plaza, maybe. Okay. I hope it was Crown Royal. That would be awesome. Like the giant, the the outside of the hotel looks like a giant purple velvet bag. That's that's <laughs> that's what I kept calling it. I'm like, that's not right. That's that's the alcohol. Like, what am I thinking of? <laughs> uh, so was was this where was this convention at? Was it in the convention center or was it out at one of the hotels, like out by the airport? Because there was a bunch of conference. The convention uh, center. You went to one was, of these with us. That was one of the first times you and I asked a waitress if she had heard of Matlock. Was that that convention? Indiana? No, that was at Pittsburgh. Was that Pittsburgh? You never that went to Indiana Pittsburgh. with us? I've never gone to Indianapolis with you guys. Well, then the restaurant I pointed to my girlfriend said that's a good place. We went there with John. I apparently never went there with John. So I uh, see these convention centers, after a while, they all start to look the same. I mean, what what can you do? Okay, Justin bailed me out. Nope, I was there and it was Indiana. That's what he says in his uh, in his note. It, yes, I, I believe that you are correct. Justin said, I thought you had a wrestling thing. That probably, that's probably, I was booked at a wrestling show, of course, probably. That's where I am half the time in my life. But anyways, um, well, that's great, man, that you, that you guys had a great uh, showing out there. Did you pick up anything cool at the Comic-Con? I bought a tie. Wait, what? I bought, bought a Star a... Trek tie. I'm going to a wedding on Star Wars Day, so I thought what better way oh. to celebrate Star Wars Day than to get a Star Trek tie. That's all I got, man. I went to Comic-Con with a list of things to buy, but as as an adult, when you go to the Comic-Con, as much as you want to buy all this stuff, you start to think of the other things you can use your money on, like groceries or bills or all that other fun stuff, and you're like... I just, I can't do it. Even though I worked my ass off and paid, I got everything so far ahead that I could splurge this weekend. I didn't. And it kind of felt kind of good. Okay. All right. Well, uh, if, since we're sharing what, what, what's what been going on with us here recently, I got a, I had a first last night. I had a first. Congratulations, was... John. You finally met that special lady. I, dude. Can... Well, first of all, First of all, you already know that special lady, but she she took me to my first ever country music concert. That's Tim right, McGraw. Tim McGraw. That's right. We went and saw Tim McGraw, and uh, I mean it was it was fine. It was I don't know any of his songs other than I like it, I love it. That song I know, but that's the only one I know. Don't um, take the girl. Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
Is that one of them? Yeah. I don't know. Really? Okay. Yeah, I don't mind some Tim McGraw. He's fine. Okay. Hey, man. It's not, my, just... it's not, it's not my style of music either, but, you know, there's some Tim McGraw songs that I'm, I'm cool with. I, same here. Same here. Like, I, he's not my cup of tea, but, you know, um, Where the Green Grass Grows, that's one that Justin's talking about. Maybe. Maybe if I heard it last night and I knew that that's the name of the song, I would have went, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, look, yeah, not my cup of tea, but, um, you know, my girlfriend has gone to other concerts that she, you know, like Sylvan Esso, she was like, I, I don't know about this band, but I'll go. Turns out she liked them, but, you know, yeah, that's the give and take of a relationship. It is. Mm -hmm. it's you know, fun to take than to give, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you know what? I, you beat me to the joke. I was going to try to fit in some joke about an alibi with a relationship. But nonetheless, uh, Jason, are you ready to jump on into this, man? Hold on, John. I mean, guys, I had a huge milestone. So I have a guy that I buy my movies from, Toyologist over on whatnot. Thanks. For, you're welcome for the plug, buddy. But uh, he had uh, Perry Mason, the complete series. It's like a two hundred dollar box set, and you guys already know that I have Murder She Wrote, I have Matlock, I have Colombo. So I was missing the Perry Mason set. I got it for forty bucks. It was a freaking steal. I was wow, so excited. It's sitting in my living room with the other two, and I can't wait to unite it with Matlock as well. And I can have the foursome in my background when we do this show. Very exciting, John. Very exciting. Ghostbusters Frozen King, guys. It's a Ghostbusters movie. I don't know what everybody's expecting out of a Ghostbusters movie. If you like Ghostbusters, you like Frozen Kingdom. That's my review. All right. So, yeah, we can jump into it, John. <laughs> All right. Then let's get into our opening statements. As you mentioned, the episode is entitled The Mother. Its original air date was September 18, 1990. Small interesting factoid, by the way, this past Monday, this was the episode on Me TV. So uh, I texted uh, you, Jason, and let you know about that. But as you also mentioned, it's the first episode of season five. So curious to see if that momentum from season four carries on over here. I'm not going to comment one way or the other. And Jason, you look like you, your mouth, your lips are sealed, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's talk about some guest stars. Uh, let's talk, first of all, about a young lady by the name of Eileen Barnett. She'll be playing the role of Laura Larson. You may know her from a previous episode of Matlock, the bestseller, which was episode four, season four. She played Elizabeth Lyle. This was the um, the romance writer who then was killed by, uh, or was accused of killing a friend's husband. Uh, it, I, I remember this episode. It, it was because my biggest thing was I was confusing it because there's the advice column, this one called The Love Lorn. And that is where we're going to find another one of our guest stars. More on that in a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Eileen also has played the role of Judith Scott on Knott's Landing. Uh, she's had a long 148 episodes uh, tenure on Days of Our Lives as Stephanie Woodruff, Elaine Braddock as, uh, or Elaine Braddock, excuse me, on Who's the Boss, and a ton of other credits to her name. And here we go. Here's a, here's a stretch, but I'm going to make it work. She's also connected to the Matlock reboot because she was on an episode of Harry's Law with Kathy Bates. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll accept that. That's a good connection. That's a good one. Well, let's talk about uh, probably, at least in my humble opinion, the most recognizable of all the guest stars. Shirley Knight. Oh, that's not who I thought you were going to say. Oh, no, no. Uh, Shirley, Shirley Knight as Phyllis Todd. You may know her from her role on Desperate Housewives as Phyllis Van de Camp. She was mom in Paul Blart, Mall Cop, Nisi in The Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood, Beverly in As Good as It Gets, uh, Katie Quirk on Spencer for Hire, and over a hundred more credits to her name. Who do you think I was going to say, by the way? Uh, Philip Baker Hall, because I, I recognized him more so than the other. 
Oh, he is not on the list. I'm going to let you prepare prepare to uh, to tell me and defend why I should have put him on the list. All right. Why you all do right. that? Why you do that? I'll run down our last couple. Uh, our next. I got it. I'm already ready to go, oh, man. Oh, okay. Let's name. go. Let's go. Philip Baker Hall. He is in Modern Family. He's been on Curb Your Enthusiasm, a show called The Loop. He was in The Shaggy Dog with Tim Allen, The Sum of All Fears. This guy has been in, like, so many things. He's the Larry Hankin of movies. He was also in Seinfeld, uh, Rush Hour. He played the captain, L.A. Doctors, Matt Talk. Matlock, I'm sorry, Air Force One, Third Time Rock out. from the Sun. Time out. What's his name eye, again? Hardball. What's his name again? His name is Philip Baker Hall. He was in an episode of Murder, She Wrote. Ghostbusters 2, he played the chief, uh, police commissioner. And it, the list just goes on and on and on. This guy's okay. been in everything. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You know what? I agree with you. I, I should have put him on the list. He's got a very lengthy re resume. I apologize, Mr. Hall, if, if you're still with us, that is. He is still with us. Okay, good, good. I apologize, Mr. Hall. My humble apologies. John knows not what he does, Mr. Hall. It's okay. What can I say? Guilty is charged. Our next guest uh, star is Beth Toussaint, I believe is how it's pronounced, as Andrea Todd. You may know her as Hope Adam Wilson on The Young and the Restless. A female caller, a voiceover credit in Scream 3. Yashara Yar on Star Trek The Next Generation. Anna Sheridan on Babylon 5. And she also played Linda Hamilton in the Linda Hamilton story. Okay, so she did play Linda Hamilton, because that's who I thought it was. No, 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 no. I made that up. That, that's me. I'm just joshing. She oh, looks man. an awful you lot got like me. her, though. I thought that's who that was. I Googled her, and I'm like... I see. I'm surprised you chose her over Philip because I, I Googled her and I'm like, oh, she's not in anything. Like, why does she look so familiar? And then it clicked a little bit later that, oh, she looks like Linda Hamilton. She looks like a very young Linda Hamilton. Yes, that that was a joke, ladies and gentlemen. There's no Linda Hamilton story. I just I made that up as a as, I was just joshing. Anyways. All right. Our last uh, guest star is James O'Sullivan, who will be playing the role of Frank Larson. <laughs> Here you go. He, we, we, we know him from a previous episode of Matlock. The Lovelorn, where the advice columnist is murdered. Um, and uh, they had the whole typewriter shtick. That was the final clue. Uh, I believe that is from season two, episode 19. And what a douche canoe this character was. <laughs> wow, you're bringing out the, the heavy artillery with your adjectives tonight. You really didn't like this guy. I did not, man. And this is another one that I can't believe got over Philip. He was on Cop Rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, he was. <laughs> I want to go back and watch Cop Rock because I want to know if it's as bad as everybody says it is. I've seen clips. It's pretty bad, John. Yeah, well, anyways, he was also Charles in Children of the Corn 3. That should be right up your alley. It's a horror movie. And he was in Chachi in Charge. Uh, yes, he was also the governor on Arliss and uh, a TV newsman in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. All right, Jason, that's all our guest stars. So it's time for me to ask you that question that I have to ask you every. Uh, we, we should get Lin, Lin, the Lin, Linda Hamilton look alike. We should absolutely interview her. Sure. I I would absolutely thoroughly enjoy that. I'll make I'll, I'll reach out. Okay, you I I'll let you I'll let you work your magic. <laughs> all right, with that then, Jason, I need you to give me your opinion. Solely your opinion and only your opinion. So help you. I'm still waiting on the coffee, but I will take the opinion. <laughs> I'll give my opinion. I mean, I'm not going to take your opinion. I'm going to give mine. Yeah, don't take mine because you won't. You may not like mine, and you'll take it, and then you'll be stuck with it. There's no, there's no trade backs, by the way. If you take my opinion, I do want to note, guys, and this is not at all a spoiler for how I feel about this episode, but uh, they're all three of them are in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, that's a big weight lifted off your shoulder right it makes me happy it makes you happy i mean uh, maybe <laughs> maybe it makes me happy all out. right with that it's time to testify <laughs> okay 
Okay. All right. The plot of this episode is a legal secretary is accused of killing her boss who had an affair with her daughter. Okay. Before we dive in here, let's just start right now. I, <laughs> this plot, this plot was a little bit, a little bit shocking. I, I wouldn't think it would be so risque. It, it seems like it wouldn't be a plot for an episode of Matlock. What do you think, Jake? No, I don't, I don't think it's risque. Now, maybe if, like, the mom was dating him and then had the affair with the stepdaughter, then maybe. But there was no, like, shenanigans in that sense. So, I mean, I mean, it's, I, to me, it wasn't that, like, shocking. Uh, it was, it was for me, 17% shocking. I'll just leave it at that. Um, let's go to the opening scene. The opening scene is a bunch of paintings of a mother and daughter's. Where'd they find this stuff from? It was like from the Renaissance era. I'm like, what? what? How does this depict a modern mother and daughter relationship? But we go to a scene of the Atlanta skyline. And then we cut to a bar where Andrea and Frank are sitting there having a coffee, it looks like. And they're chatting about court cases. And Andrea's hoping that Frank can land her a clerking job. And then... Andrea wants to meet Frank later that night. And he's like, I got to work. But next, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, we'll hook up. And so we cut to Phyllis. And Phyllis is doing her job at her, at her desk when Frank comes in and she goes, oh, Ed Jordan's waiting on you. And a big argument starts between Frank and Phyllis because Frank is outraged. He's out. How could you let me forget that? Well, I told you this morning. It's your job to tell me and keep me on track. Blah, 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 blah. And then he does the infamous two cups of coffee shtick that Jason has lifted for his intro. And so, <laughs> you know, this guy is, again, one of those that are uh, of the many that we've had. Those over-the-top jerks jackasses if you will go ahead jason i know you want to say something about old frank larson so go ahead hit us with it i dude what a jerk like how jackass in the words of benjamin matlock how how does she still have this job i don't understand there's got to be other better paying jobs she seems like a fantastic secretary well she says like, why does she work for this guy well, but then she goes to get the coffee and she talks to that uh, that co-worker and he's, she's like, I'm too old. I'm in my 50s. And I guess maybe not really thinking about it in the 90s that that probably might be seen as being old. I think today in today's society, 50 is not old at all. I mean, no, I mean, we know. don't want it to be old, John. We're getting there now. 50 is you know. young. I mean, 50 yeah. is the new 20, right, John? <laughs> you got it, man. You got it because I'm a lot closer than you are. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, John like, and I are still doing push ups with our fingers, not our hands, our fingers. Like, we're, yeah, <laughs> gotcha. yeah, that's one the one that we're doing. Yeah, mm hmm, one handed, anyways. Um, so I mean, just I guess we need these type of villains to appreciate the, the heroes, but yeah, um, I did write down though that uh, Philip said that she she wishes that uh, Frank was dead and that she also felt trapped like a rat in a cage. And then I started immediately singing the Smashing Pumpkins. Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in a cage. There you go. There's some musical stylings of yours truly. Justin nice. is appalled. He is absolutely appalled. He is. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, so Angie arrives at Frank's office. And guess what? She catches him with another woman. Mm hmm. And uh, that other woman and him get on the elevator and they allude to that there might be a little, as Aerosmith would say, love in an elevator. You know what I'm saying, right? I do. <laughs> well, when Frank returns, Andrea confronts him they have a huge fight what about the job you promised me i can't i can't go to that firm and tell him you know hey hey the woman i've been sleeping with wants a job and then she gets mad oh you can't dump me nobody dumps me and she whacks him in the head with a bookend and that does it for frank now i do have this question though 
number one, one strike with that, to me, that seemed like some weak sauce. Like, I think you would have had to hit him multiple times to kill him. I don't see where that, that one uh, bookend right to the back of the head, I don't think that that would, that would kill somebody. What say I you? I don't think so either. Maybe she just hit him in the right spot. Maybe what Andrew should have done is she should have activated Skynet and then, oh, wait, sorry, that's that's Linda Hamilton, my bad. Murder's Anyways. wrong, folks, but um, this guy needed to be knocked on the head. Oh, oh, I think this is a first. Have you ever wished death upon a character? I didn't character? wish death. I said murder is wrong, but he did deserve to get hit in the head. I mean, I don't think it should have killed him either, Like, but he did, did deserve a bonk on the head. Maybe some amnesia. Remember, you seen the movie regarding Henry? He started off as a jackass. Well, he, he got shot in the head, got amnesia, and then became a nice guy. But I, I, don't, I don't wish that on him. But maybe a little bonk, and maybe he would have woken up as a nice guy. But unfortunately, he died. Well, and then Justin reminded us that, of course, you know, love on an elevator is better than love on an escalator. Makes me want to not go into the mall, mall rats. That kid is on the escalator! <laughs> Anyways. Folks at home, if you don't know Matt, uh, Mall Rats, you can you can Google that later. Um, so we go to Phyllis's house, and Andrea comes home, and she spills the beans about the affair and the murder. And so I guess it's answered a little bit later on because I wrote down in my notes why would Andrea have this relationship um, with with that uh, with that Frank with that Frank with Frank? Excuse me. I wrote down that Andrea probably has some daddy issues, which I think later come up in the episode. But overall, I got to be honest. I think this was a really well done scene. I thought the acting was good. I, you know, the 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 angst and the upset nature of of Phyllis was great. Um, you know, the 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 emotions that were emitted from Andrea were great. I like this scene overall. I, I mean, I agree. Well, Phillips decides that she is going to go clean up the crime scene after they, they, Andrea and her, kind of create this alibi for her. She was at home studying, ordered a pizza, blah, 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 blah. So we cut to police headquarters where Phyllis is meeting with Ben and they're just running down the facts of the case. And, um, you know, Phyllis admitted she was there in the office because of the, the spat that they had had earlier in the day. She wanted to apologize when she got there. There was uh, somebody already in Frank's office. They were arguing. They were talking. And she left. Then she came back a, a little while later. And that's when she finds Frank dead. And she's freaked out. She leaves. So Ben decides to take the case. And so he goes to Frank's office. And this is where we find out from Detective Bob Brooks that the bookcase is, or excuse me, the bookend is MIA. That there's, there's only one. There should be two. Now, this I felt to be irresponsible on Ben Matlock's behavior. Did you catch him taking a finger, an ungloved finger, and running it in the blood of Frank Larson's that is on the desk? I no, I, I missed that. And both I watched this episode twice. And I I because I watched it on Monday and then I watched it again today just to make sure I didn't miss anything or forget anything. But no, I I get I get watched the third time apparently because I missed that. Blood. I mean, they do pathogen. they do ungloved stuff in the crime scenes all the time in eighties and nineties television. But I just I was like, what are you doing, Ben? What are you doing? Can't believe you. Well, then we cut to a scene uh, after after Bob Brooks tells uh, Ben he's got to get all of his evidence because the the wife of uh, Frank wants wants the office cleared out, and so. We go to a scene where Ben is arriving at the house, the home of Mr. And Mrs. Larson. And here she's got movers. She's moving all the stuff out. And we find out she was having affairs. He was having an affair. It was like a marriage just to be married, I guess, or for some business pr purpose or whatnot. And um, there are people out there, man, that didn't. I mean, these, these are not those people, but there are people out there that they love their spouses, but yet they still have a deal where they can do stuff on the side. That's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. anyway, I believe that's continue. referred to as an open marriage, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, we get a little bit of juvenile Ben, by the way. Did you catch when he was like, mm -hmm. oh, "Are you are these affairs business or personal?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He he got a little giggly. Yeah, got a little giggly. He's very curious about the life of somebody that's had an affair. I wonder where that comes from. And I have we have we I don't know if we where we're at in the episode as far as this happening, but. He actually mentions it, one of his children for the first time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's next. That's next. So uh, uh, Frank's wife, her alibi, she was playing tennis and, and actually had dinner. And it ch checks out, actually, because in the next scene, Conrad shows up at the office to tell Michelle it checks out. And now we get the three A's of how women get gentlemen to pay attention to them. Thank you, Michelle Thomas, for this little bit of comedy gold, because this is awesome. I shall refer to this as the bet, ladies and gentlemen. So, basically, Conrad bets Michelle that she could do all her flirtiness, and Ben will never notice. He'll never know. He's oblivious to it all. That he'll shine his shoes and scratch his back against the wall. He's oblivious to it all. First off, I'd like to say this is clearly stuff you could not get away with in 2024 because this seems like this type of a bet, this these types of behavior would get you right in a HR like that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, basically, 50 bucks, uh, which, by the way, if you're curious, because I looked it up, 50 bucks in 1990 is, a, is the equivalent of $115 today. So for 50 bucks, the bet is on that Michelle thinks she can make Ben crack. Connor is like, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Who what did you think about the bet, Jason? Um it's I mean it is it, it's silly fun. Um I mean as long as Michelle's okay with it, which she is, it 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 plays out pretty funny, I think, in this episode. <laughs> Whoever came up with this idea was pretty smart, by the way. I, I do got to give you – I don't know who – which one of the writers came up with this idea, but this is this was a pretty good idea, I got to say. So Ben goes to meet uh, Phyllis to talk to her real quick about, you know, that it might be a ex-lover that may have caused the death of, of Frank. And Phyllis introduces Andrea to Ben, and this is where Ben talks about his daughter in Philadelphia, who is a lawyer. First time in a while we've heard about the kids. And uh, Ben is going to go check the phone logs because um, he, he thinks, again, that he's got this theory about the lovers calling in to the office. Um, I felt that Andrea did not do a very good job here with her alibi. In fact, I would say that this might have been a little bit of showing your cards, if you will, if you were Andrea. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're moving on to the first instance of the bet. <laughs> ben is shining his shoes while Michelle comes over with her perfume that she had just sprayed on. She comes over, and they talk, and he, she's leaning very close to him. And what does Ben do? Ben, Ben. <laughs> Something smells in here. I'm sure that's exactly what any woman wants to be told is that their perfume makes them smell. <laughs> yeah. I not a smooth move is all I'm saying. No. And then he even goes further as the saying, Oh, I know what it is. The exterminator was here yesterday. Ah, oh, good gosh, man. Oh, good gosh. So our next scene is that Conrad and Ben check out Frank's love nest and they find takeout bags from the Matios restaurant. So they go to the Matios, and the bartender there is like, oh, yeah, Frank's in here all the time. He's got some new blonde that's in here with him. I didn't know that uh, that he would like this type of woman because she's in law school. She's smart, blah, blah, blah. And so Ben and Conrad set up uh, Andrea to be positively ID'd at a restaurant by the bartender. And the bartender said, of course, yep, that's the blonde I've been seeing on the arm of Frank. And, uh, oh, I, I did skip this real quick. Ben gives her a copy of Black's Law Dictionary. I wonder if that's a real thing. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. 
But we have a comment in the comments section. Justin, if you want to pull it up on the screen, it's my buddy from Whatnot Digital Express Media. Dude, thank you so much for jumping in. I appreciate your support. Thank Thanks, you so man. Much. Talking Matlock. If you got a grandmother, please recommend the show to her. <laughs> or grandfather. We don't want yeah. to exclude genders now. Come on. Well, you know anybody who works in nursing homes? Please pass this tape around. John and I would like to get more exposure. That's right. We got, that, that's we got free pudding to anybody that's listening that would like some. Uh, pudding. Wait, wait, wait. I think we have yet to talk about the culinary desires of one Ben Matlock for this episode. You wait. All right. So Ms. Hawkins is cleaning Ben's home. And this is where bet number two falls into play. Uh, <laughs> well done. Well done, sir. <laughs> Um, so Michelle comes in in a very elegant black dress and she, she goes over there talking about, Hey, Hey, Andrew was having an affair with Frank. And then the little runway walk, right? The little wiggle, if you will, from Michelle, and then walks back with the same little wiggle. And Ben's like, Oh, that, let's do that again. Do that again. Do that again. And then he quotes something that's so ridiculous. I don't even remember what it was from. I think it was from I Love Lucy, where he goes, oh, you got a little hitch in your get-along. <laughs> got a little hitch in your get-along. He goes and scratches his back against the wall. <sighs> the first part of bet number two is ruined. So far, this is not working out for Michelle. So Michelle says, let's go to lunch. Let's go al fresco. All right, which Ben doesn't know what that is. So she explains, it's just eating outside. Did, so, does she think that Ben is going to suddenly think that she's showing interest in him? Because isn't she like half his age? I don't think Ben would even register that as a like a possibility. And what was she going to do if Ben was into her? Like, I know! Just, this entire time leading this poor older man along. It's kind of messed up, Michelle. That's why I said in my notes I have, again, this bet equals canceled in 2024. Yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right on, on all of those and here's the other thing. You knew that you were going to eat outside, and you knew that there was a good chance you were going to a hot dog cart, which you did. Yeah. Which makes me also wonder, I wonder in real life, who really liked hot, go hot dogs, right? Like, I'm sure Andy Griffith loved them. But, I mean, who of the, 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 the guests or the uh, supporting cast, I could just picture, like, somebody, somebody. Like, for an example, Nancy Stafford on this episode showing up going, ah, I got to eat hot dogs. Ugh, I hate hot dogs. Like, nah, I want to know. Hot dogs, I mean, it's. I think now we're getting more into the hot dogs are gross because people are realizing what they're made out of. I still love hot dogs. But back in the 80s, man, everybody was eating hot dogs. Nobody cared <laughs> in the 80s. Ah, nitrates. Ah, we we'll worry about this man, later. that came out of that time area. So, I mean, yeah, nobody cared. <laughs> <laughs> Matlock wants those buns. <laughs> Ben's hot. I mean, dog pink cart. slime was still the go-to meat in school. So, oh, uh, <laughs> I grew up on pink slime, John. It turned out just fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Do we have another comment? We do, man. My whatnot friends are showing up in droves. What's up, Sriracha? Thank you so much, buddy. Yes, absolutely, Mr. Sriracha. Thank you again. That sounds like a wrestling name, like that. That seems like a luchador name, you know, Mr. Saracha. Anyways, I'm the wrestling nerd here. What can I say? Well, Ben confronts Phyllis about a Andrew's affair. He's, he's like, look, the gig is up. And this one, I thought this was weird. She begs him not to bring it up and says that she'll have to fire him. But you're the one that needs Ben. Ben doesn't really need you, Phyllis. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Ben and, doesn't need you. I, I knew the second she told him that, that he wasn't going to listen. He'd find a loophole around it. Oh. Because Ben is like the only honest defense lawyer in America. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The uh, opinions of Jason Taylor, solely <laughs> Jason Taylor, do not reflect John saying, Orlando. Like, <laughs> most of them are going to represent their client the way their client wants to be represented. They're not going to go against their client. If their client sure. wishes to not explore this, they're not going to explore it. 
they're going to find other ways to get the client off, but not Ben because he believes in doing the right thing. And if that daughter deserves to be in prison, <laughs> Jason gets through. Hey, you could try. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You can try. You'll get a couple Blu-rays from me. Nice, some nice DVDs, maybe. Um, you but, know, they're eyeing, they're eyeing that Perry Mason disc set. You know that. Maybe. Maybe. My Columbo set. You can't have that. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Well, we go to the courtroom where Julie is questioning a witness. And, and basically, it's that lady that witnessed the argument from the office the other day. And then, um, basically, Ben and Andrea, they discuss her affair with Frank. And uh, they're, they're discussing it out in the hallway. When Michelle walks up and goes, hey, uh, Ben, I need to talk to you. Julie thinks that she's found the evidence. Like, she wants the evidence, and we think we might be able to get it. And well, plus, Ben is dating Julie. Like, <laughs> you think flirting with Ben is going to work? He's been kind of dating Julie since season two, and he hasn't pulled the trigger on that. So where do you think Ben is just going to suddenly, like, shift to Michelle? I don't get it. Oh, we have really deconstructed this plot, haven't we? We certainly have. Um, all right. Well, here here we go. Let's get all – you know what this, this, this episode is missing? You know what this is missing, Jason? This is missing a little Mission Impossible theme, you know? A little a little Ethan Hawke, all right? That's what we're missing. That's what we're missing here because we cut to a scene where Andrea is pulls up to an alley, starts going through the dumpsters looking for the other bookend that supposedly is being sought after by Detective Bob Brooks, all right? Um, <clears throat> so this – Homeless woman comes up and is like, oh, I got it right here. You want it, you know, $50, right? In which Andrew's already paid her $20 just to find this thing or supposedly find this thing. So what do we know? Money is exchanged hands. Andrea leaves. And the homeless woman was Michelle Thomas in disguise. Oh, good. I like that. That was a good little sting operation. Here's my thing. I swore like it was Ms. Hawkins because they mentioned Ms. Hawkins. She was in the episode earlier and she's an older woman. And I thought, oh, it's Ms. Hawkins doing some double duty, you know? And uh, no, it's 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 with the fake nose and the wig and the whole nine yards. It was, uh, it was super spy time, I guess. I don't. Have we seen Miss Hawkins before? Have we known that Ben's had a housekeeper this whole time? Yeah, she's been in like at least two episodes in the last couple. She's not, she's not a constant recurring character. Okay. I don't remember seeing her once. Yeah. Um, all right. So the bookend, by the way, that was purchased by Andrea was, um, basically, (laughs) Oh, okay. Sorry. We basically it's, it's, it's a duplicate. So it's not the original one. So, sorry folks. We just got a note from, uh, Justin for, for some, glitches if you will so let's go back to the courtroom we're in the hallway andrea and ben they they exchange some information and try to get prepped for her testimony ben reveals that the jury might not find her mother to be uh innocent and then ben pitches the uh the job angle to the affair and all of this i think is just to rattle andrea i think all of this was just in that aspect just to get her off kilter Andrea's on the stand. She talks about the arguments that Phyllis and Frank had. She gives her uh, uh, her alibi, but she states that she ate on campus, which is, oh, no. Oh, no, that's a fumble. That's a fumble, Andrea, because that's not what you said. You said originally you had pizza. And the pizza delivery guy, by the way, is in the in the courtroom. He can't identify Andrea, nor can she identify him. Uh-oh. So Phillips just just erupts in like, I did it, I did it, I'm guilty, I did it, blah, 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 blah. And Ben, Ben tries to get her to, to stop, uh, or excuse me, she tries to get Ben to stop, but Ben continues to unravel uh, Andrea's uh, alibi, and there's chaos. There's chaos in the courtroom. Chaos, I say, chaos. And then what we do is that uh let's see there we go phillips claims that she is guilty and finally 
Finally, after Phyllis admits to it, Angie cracks and gives it all up. What do you think, Jason? I, um, I'm not giving my, I'm not testify or giving my closing statement yet. Okay, so I will right. hold off. Okay, so we cut to the outside in the hallway where Conrad wants his money, but Michelle says, "Ah, ah, ah not till the end of the day. Not till the end of the day." And so Ben comes out and says, "Hey, Michelle, are you busy tonight?" No, Ben. No, why do you ask? Well, I have tickets to the opera that I was giving. Wow, that was a lengthy one. Anyways. Yeah, no, that was a bot. I'm sorry, Justin. I didn't mean to click on that. <laughs> Producer Justin's going ape shit in the background. See? Sneak <laughs> peek. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but but you know what? I'm going to just give you the tickets. Ben, Ben, she thought Ben was going to ask her out on a date. But Ben was like, here's the tickets. You can just have the tickets. And then, in what was hilarious, the closing scene is Ben says to Conrad, has Michelle been acting a little weird? Maybe we need to find her a man. And then Conrad goes, oh, she's got it taken care of with the three A's. And that, my friends, is the episode, The Mother. So, um, Jason, you got anything you want to uh, to discuss here? You, uh, you want to get to it. You want to get to the, okay. You know what? I can't. He's holding it in. I got. I got to, ladies and gentlemen. I got to say, let's get to our closing statements. Uh, this is the public podcast for John and I. We rate the show on a gavel system. One gavel means we absolutely hated it. Five gavels means it was absolutely amazing. Negative thirty-seven gavels means that I am retiring from life. I'm moving to Florida in a van and going to live down by the river. John, how many gavels do you rate this episode? I give it four gavels. Um, I I liked I liked the bet. I thought the the acting was good, especially between Phillips and Andrea. Uh, the comedy that was laced within the bet was great. Uh, my my only gripe that I have is, is as we talked about at the beginning. You hear your mother whine and complain and complain and argue with this dude, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have sex with him. Well, that's, that's her boss. Every not not me. I, I actually do love my boss, but a lot of people complain about their bosses, and their bosses might be lovely people outside of work, because you know most bosses are not usually you know somebody that you can be like buddy buddy with. But um, so she's probably just like, ah, my mom just complaining about this guy. He's nice to me. He would never do that to me until you know they do it to them, and then they're angry. Yeah. There's a lot of doing it, by the way, between Andrea and Frank. But I digress um okay well that that's it but i still give it a solid four what say you i give it a four and a half i also really like this episode it was a lot of fun a great kickoff to the season five premiere i liked it we're continuing the trend of season four a little bit mm -hmm. better because we have everybody in the episode working off each other the way i mm -hmm. personally like this show to be and um yeah, man, I just, in these chats, I have a lot of issues trying to find out, like, why people love the first two seasons so much, because those are the episodes everybody chats about. When seasons four and five of Matlock, so far, five of them were one episode in, three and four, I'll say, have been just so much better as far as writing, story, so on and so forth. So I, I don't get it, but this is another another strong one. <laughs> Yeah, agreed with you 100%. Uh, Justin, do we have any comments? We do, man. Another one from my whatnot group. Guys, thank you so much. This Discord is coming through for us tonight, John. Thank you guys so much for the support. Please hit that like button. I appreciate it. I love all of you guys. It's fantastic. Is, is, is that spatial tests? Is that is that the, the handle there? Was that the handle? All I right. So. <laughs> yeah, Jamie, yeah. thank you as well. Both both spatial tests and Jamie, thank you for checking out the show. We appreciate it so much. Yeah, um, Jamie, Jamie, you're wrong, but um, I do respect you tuning in. I'm just kidding. I've never seen an episode. I've seen one episode of the Andy Griffith show. I need um, I need to fix that. But I, I was I gonna say I I'm I'm gonna agree with Jamie. I'm gonna agree that uh, that uh, Andy Andy Taylor is greater than. Ben Matlock, but ben just Matlock is pretty much just Andy Taylor grown up. That's from well, my experience with as, the as, Andy long as, show. as long as you're not talking about naughty stuff, because then we revert back to immature Ben. <laughs> Anyways, um, 
All right. Well, so four and a half and four. We're pretty pretty uh, close there. Uh, Jason, let's talk about the Three Geeks podcast, man. Um, you were off, obviously, Saturday because you were in Indianapolis doing the Indiana Comic Book Convention. But normally, what can folks expect on a Saturday night if they tune in to the Three Geeks podcast? We've got a lot to catch up on this Saturday. We have a Dune 2 spoiler review that we're going to be doing. Obviously, I'm going to come with a Ghostbusters review with Max. X-Men 97 drop. we got to talk about that. We're going to be listing our favorite um, X-Men characters, our dream team, if you will, our top five characters from the X-Men universe, Ooh. and just so much more. And guys, if you're an anime, an animation fan or even a fan of the X-Men series in the 90s, watch X-Men 97. It literally picks up right where the last one left off. It's like no time has passed and you're right back in that world. You know, some some the animation is slightly different, but it's the same. Like it's a little bit brighter, but it's the same style animation. The voice actors all do a great job. It, but we're gonna be talking about that this Saturday at 7 p.m. live. And you know, I post shorts every day, and it's fun. Come hang out with us. Come say hi. There you go. Three Geeks podcast on all the social medias, and that's where you can yep. find them. And at uh, Three Geeks J, if you want to. Come check me out on Instagram. Say hello. I get a lot of DMs from Matlock fans, and I love it. Well, as for me, uh, you can find me, of course, uh, at PVD MVP. That's my uh, my Twitter handle, X handle, whatever you want to call it. That's my personal uh, uh, Twitter account. Uh, but let's talk about the PVD cast, which is my own personal podcasting project. Uh, this week, uh, I have Gerald Glassford on as a guest. He is a talented prod podcaster. Out of Las Vegas, he and I sit down. We're, we're great wrestling pals. We sit down and we talk about our favorite wrestling matches of all time. There's some from all different eras featuring all different superstars. We even justify why we like them so much. So check it out at pvdcast.com or wherever you find great podcasts. All right, Jason, with that, should we uh, should we head on out here before we get yelled at because we haven't delivered that coffee to two mugs? Please. Like, comment, subscribe. If you left messages in the chat, leave a comment afterwards. The comments help so much. The chat helps. The likes help. The subscribes help. It all helps. Guys, go check out some of our previous. We've interviewed members of the cast. Go check those out. And uh, that's all I got. So as they say in court, nothing further. <laughs>